Hi, welcome back. We are going to take a look at balancing equations. In chemistry, the only reason that we balance equations is because of the, of the law of conservation of mass, which tells us that matter cannot be created or destroyed. Matter cannot be created or destroyed which means that when we have a chemical equation, something like reactants yields products, the masses, the total mass on the left-hand side of my equation has to equal the total mass on the right-hand side of my equation. So let's look at a really basic formula first. We have H2 plus O2 yields H2O. And some strategies for balancing equations, the first thing that you need to do is count the atoms that you have on either side of your equation. So our equation is only made of hydrogen and oxygen. On the left-hand side, we have two hydrogens and two oxygens. On the right-hand side, we have two hydrogens and one oxygen. Obviously, we do not have equal amounts of oxygen, so we're going to have to do something to fix that. The only thing that we can do is add a coefficient, which is a large number that goes in front of the chemical formula. So I'm going to put a coefficient of 2 here because I need two oxygens on the right-hand side. And the coefficient multiplies into everything in the formula. So not only do I have two oxygens, but I also have now on this side four hydrogens. So I'm going to change this number to a four. And again, because two times two is four, the coefficient will multiply into everything in that formula, which means I need to come back and look at the left-hand side of my formula and fix the number of hydrogens. And I'm going to put a coefficient of two in front of my hydrogen. And just a brief background, hopefully you remember, this two here is called a subscript, and the subscript is part of the chemical formula. We cannot change the subscript when we're balancing equations. The only thing that we can change is the coefficient. If we change the subscript, so for example, if I decided I'm just going to put a two over by that oxygen, I've completely changed the chemical formula. I no longer have water. So we cannot change subscripts. This is a big no. The only thing that you can do is change the coefficient. Let's try a slightly harder question and see how balancing goes. So we have NH3 plus O2 yields NO plus H2O. So we can start by counting. On the left-hand side, I have one nitrogen. On the right-hand side, I have one nitrogen. On the left-hand side, I have three hydrogens. On the right-hand side, I have two hydrogens. On the left-hand side, I have two oxygens. And on the right-hand side, I have two oxygens, one, two. So the first thing that I would fix would be the hydrogen. Obviously, that's the only thing that is imbalanced at the moment. And notice we have three and two. So what we're going to have to do is find the lowest common factor between three and two, which is a six. So I need to find a way that I can make six hydrogens on both sides of my equation. So I'm going to choose the coefficient of two on this side because two times three is equal to six. And I'm going to choose the coefficient of three on the right-hand side, again, because three times two is six. But unfortunately, that does change some other things. Now I have two nitrogens on the left-hand side, and I have four total oxygens on the right-hand side. So let's change our nitrogen. We can put a two here. And now, I have five total oxygens on the right-hand side, and I only have two on the left-hand side. And unfortunately, I have five, again, oxygens on the right-hand side, 
And if you notice, my chemical formula for oxygen on the left is O2. I can only have an even number of oxygens on the left-hand side because no matter what coefficient I put here, if it's a 2 or 3 or 4 or 5 or 6, whatever that number is times 2 will always give me an even number of oxygen. So I'm going to have to change one of these coefficients to give me an even number of oxygen on the right-hand side of my equation. So let's change this to a 4 and this to a 4. 4. Four. So now I have 12, 12 hydrogens, which means I need to put a 6 here. So this will change to 12. And now I have 4 plus 6 oxygens. I have 10, which means my coefficient here will be a 5. And we can double check and make sure that everything is balanced, and it is 4, 4, 12, 12, 10, and 10. Let's try another harder one. We have C4H10 plus O2 yields CO2 plus H2O. So, typical combustion reaction, we can start by counting. I have 4, 10, 2, 1, 2, and 3. And my first instinct here would be to fix my carbon. So my first instinct would be to put a 4 here and to put a 5 here so that I have 4 carbons and 10 um, hydrogens right off the bat on the right-hand side. But we run into this problem again where we have an odd number of oxygens, and on the left-hand side we have O2, so again, whatever my coefficient that I put there is going to be multiplied by 2, so it has to be an even number. The easiest way to fix this is to multiply whatever coefficient is in front of water by the value of 2. So I'm going to take my 5 and change it into a 10, so that it makes my oxygen an even number. So now we need to change this to a 20, which means on my left-hand side, I'm gonna have to put a two here so that I can have 20 hydrogens on the left-hand side. Also changes my carbon from four to eight So instead of having a 4 here, I need an 8. And again, this 8 also gets multiplied into this oxygen. So we have 16 oxygens here and 10 for a total of 26 oxygens on the right-hand side, which means my coefficient here is going to be a 13. And 13 times 2 is 26. Let's try two more examples, easier questions. Cl2 plus Ki yields KCl plus I2. So again, we start out by counting. We have two chlorines and one chlorine, one potassium and one potassium, one iodine and two iodines. So it doesn't really matter where we start here. I'll just put a 2 so that my chlorine becomes a 2 on the right-hand side. Of course, when I put a 2 there, I also have two potassiums. So I'm going to come over to the left-hand side and put a coefficient of 2 in front of my potassium iodide, which fixes both of my other values. So everything is equal, and we can move on to the next question. Last one, we have iron oxide plus carbon, it's carbon, monoxide, and iron. So let's count up what we have. I have two, three, one, 
and one, one, and one. So the first thing I would start with is my iron because it's by itself over here. So I'm going to put the coefficient of two. And then I can fix my oxygen by putting a coefficient of three here. But that also changes my number of carbons to three, which means I need a coefficient of three on the left-hand side. So again, just to review, the only thing we can change is the coefficient. The coefficient multiplies into everything in the formula. We can never change the subscript. And the reason that we balance equations is because we need the mass of the reactants to equal the mass of the products because of the law of conservation of mass. Even, even during a chemical reaction, mass cannot be created or destroyed or lost. So we do have to balance equations. And that will be the first important step in solving any stoichiometric problem. So if you can't balance equations, you do need to take the time to practice that. Otherwise, you will not be able to move on to stoichiometry. If there's anything else that you would like to know about balancing, or if you have any other questions, feel free to leave a comment. Don't forget to check out my other videos if you need help with any other areas of chemistry. 